Welcome to the e-commerce marketing podcast, the highly rated digital marketing podcast that provides weekly digital marketing tips and strategies from some of the world's top digital marketers and e-commerce entrepreneurs that will help you take your digital marketing to the next level. Sit back and enjoy this power-packed episode hosted by Arlen Robinson, who is an e-commerce entrepreneur and digital marketing expert with over 20 years of experience. Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own affiliate program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. My name is Arlen Robinson, and I am your host. And today we have a very special guest, Matt Ranta from Nimble Gravity. He is a partner and head of practice for e-commerce and digital transformation. Nimble Gravity is a consultancy that specializes in data science, digital strategy, e-commerce, near shore engineering teams, analytics, and organizational strategy. They work with companies ranging in size from startup to those with billions in revenue and across varied industries such as endangered species protection, healthcare, D2C clothing, and more. Welcome to the podcast, Matt. Yeah, thanks, Arlen. It's great to be here. I uh, appreciate the chance to have a great discussion. Yeah, uh, likewise. And thank you for joining me. I appreciate you coming on. And I'm really excited to talk to you today. Um, we're going to be kind of just breaking it down to just some kind of core things I like to think of as, um, I guess you could say, things that um, often companies overlook. Every th- every e-commerce business is always trying to, you know, shoot for the moon, <laughs> I guess you could say, yeah. in, their, in their marketing efforts and try to do these big things. But if you kind of dial it down a bit and focus on just some core fundamentals, so you can have success. And so we're going to be talking about the simple things that e-commerce companies can do to improve their performance. So um, I know we're going to you're going to be enlightening us um, on us on, with some powerful nuggets today that I know are going to go a long way with our listeners. But uh, before we do get into all of that, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and you know specifically how you got into what you're doing today? Yeah, absolutely. So, gosh, you know, uh, it was about 24 years ago when I started in e-commerce. Uh, wow. So really long time ago, back in 1998, okay. uh, I was working for a company called uh, Vans.com, uh, mm-hmm. Vans Incorporated, and not the shoe company. Uh, okay. Some people <laughs> do mistake it for that, but it was a it was a consumer electronics and appliance retailer based in the state of Montana that went yeah. online in, in 98. And I was fortunate to be a part of that team. And then Worked my way through a whole variety of, of different e-commerce related roles, both in B2C and B2B, doing things like creating, uh, you know, intrawebs or franchisee only webs for Cricket Wireless, where people could come and buy fixtures and security devices and this kind of stuff for their phones and stores. Uh, then moving into Aero Electronics, where I ran a global marketplace selling electronic components, you know, in 156 plus different countries uh and you know you know had two and a half million to three million SKUs at any one time uh then moved into mobile martech and mobile advertising helping games to get you know downloads and installs of their application their game and then get engagement in those from players uh and then finally took the leap into consulting um a little over you know a year and say four months ago um, maybe six months, a year and a half. Um, and I did that for a little while as a solo shop. Uh, and then, um, you know, I was working alongside Nimble Gravity on so many different projects and the founders of Nimble Gravity are friends of mine from a past life where we all worked at Aero Electronics together. And it was kind of one of those conversations where it was like, well, this is silly that we're working on the same project, but we're two different companies when we all know each other, we're all in the same place. Why don't you just come join us and we'll be, you know, better able to serve clients all around, right? Yeah. Like you as a solopreneur, um, will all of a sudden have the ability to have a data science team and to talk about building, you know, engineering teams to help people build software products. And we'll have, 
you know, the e-commerce skills that you bring to the table. And so it just made a heck of a lot of sense. And then, uh, you know, January of, of 22, uh, I joined up with Nimble Gravity and okay. uh, I've been, you know, loving it ever since We're okay. working in the consulting world. Yeah. Okay. That, that's awesome. Good story. And thank you for, uh, you know, sharing that with us. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of also a testament to the fact that, um, you know, the relationships that you build in these, in the business world, um, you know, you never know what can happen in the future. So, uh, you know, the work's the wise is you, you never want to, you know, burn bridges or, you know, tarnish relationships uh, because yeah. you never know what opportunities can happen in the future. And so it's good that you, you know, you maintain that relationship with founders of Nimble Gravity and, and are now able to work with them to do, you know, do, do some big things. So that's that that's good to hear. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as I mentioned at the top of the episode today, we're going to be talking about, you know, just just the simple things that often do get overlooked by e-commerce businesses um, that, you know, can really help improve their overall performance. So I really want to where I want to start with is just if you can share just some common mistakes, because I think you can learn from a lot of mistakes these days that, uh, you know, common mistakes that e-commerce companies make, you know, when it comes to marketing and just the overall performance. Yeah, absolutely. So I've, I've written articles about this. So uh, definitely a, an area of passion. Uh, one of the first things I'll, I'll talk about is just flat out, make your site faster and yeah, okay. more performant, right? And mm -hmm. like a lot of people don't tie that into SEO ranking and they don't tie it into marketing and they don't tie it into customer experience, but it goes into every one of those things, right? Mm -hmm. Like if your site is slow to load and it's not interactive yet and the customer's trying to press on a button and they're getting frustrated, that's a problem. If right. you, your site is slow uh, and it's slower than all of your competitive set, Google's going to take notice of that and they're going to rank your competitive set potentially higher than you because you're having a lower performing website, right? So it's super easy to go out and go to like pagespeed.web.dev and test yeah. your site and get a list of all the things that you need to go fix, right? Do yeah. you have unused JavaScript, unused CSS? Do you Are you loading images that are way down the page that are huge mm -hmm. before they're actually even needed, right? Like lazy load those, don't bring them in and, in your first call to, the, to your resources, right? Right. And then it'll even tell you things like, hey, your images are in an old format, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people are still arguing about, do you say GIF or GIF or whatever? And that's an old <laughs> right. image format. Like, who cares, <laughs> right. Right? right? Like, leave it alone yep. and start talking about AVIF and WebP because those are a, a more compressed image format that are like half the size of even, you know, the smallest GIF or JPEG, right? Mm -hmm. And so that is going to make your site faster and, and going to make it load better. Yeah. Um, you, you know, one of the other things that I see, Arlen, uh, is people that don't surface their content well, right? Mm -hmm. And so spend all this money on content writing and you maybe hire a freelancer or you have a staff internally to your organization and they're, they're writing articles, they're writing blog posts, they're creating marketing copy and content. Maybe they're describing whole categories, whatever it might be. And then you get it buried on your site. You would be amazed how many sites that I have seen where content might be 40 or 50 clicks deep. It's wow. just, it's unbelievable, right? <laughs> yeah. Like you, you'd have been better off sitting in the parking lot of the building you work in or your driveway if you work from home and like just burning $20 bills, right? <laughs> yeah, <Because basically. laughs> yeah. It's like, what are you doing, right? Yeah, so, sure. you know, if you're not using simple things like pagination, if you are interlinking your articles, like you write a new article, put a link to an old article in there. Do mm -hmm. you have breadcrumbs at the top of your website? All these kinds of things surface your content much better and make it much faster, not only for a, you know, a crawler to get to that information and to index you well from an yep. SEO perspective, but they make it more user-friendly for an actual user. And I, yeah. I think that's what people have to, to really focus on. Yeah. Uh, you know, I could go on about new social channels or non-branded search or, or lots of other things, but <laughs> the one that stands out to me uh, that I, would want to mention too is like doing email better. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this day and age, like my one of the founders in Nimble Gravity, this guy named Tony Og, he and I share like 
awful emails that people send us with each other because we get right. a kick out of them. Right. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's like, it's, it's poor grammar. It's mm-hmm. like they leave in somebody else's name, the, you know, uh, half the email is blank or part of the template that they use to write off of is still mm-hmm. stuck in there or whatever it might mm-hmm. be. Right. And if people could just do email better, they'd probably find so much more marketing revenue coming in, uh, more sales coming in if they're doing cold outreach, whatever it might be, right? Mm-hmm. Proofread people, proofread, have somebody else read it, read out loud, put it into yes. something like email on acid and understand, does my email look good in all these different clients and browser settings and all this kind of stuff and yeah. just do that so much better. So there's yeah. a few things for you. Yeah, those yeah. are great. Yeah. And, and the, one of the key things about all of those things are, I mean, really, those are things you really need to get in order before you do any large scale, large scale marketing campaigns, totally. you know, so this has nothing to really even to do with your direct outreach. These are things you got to kind of clean up in house, uh, you know, to get things in order. You know, it was interesting. You yeah. mentioned the, the first thing you mentioned was the page load speed. Yeah, it's, I think, more important than ever, not only because it is a factor with the search engines and for SEO, but I think these days it's um, people are more accustomed to things loading quicker because of the bandwidth increases yeah. that we all have, you know, where I am, at, you know, my place, I get, um, I mean, I'm getting uh, the plan I have, I'm getting between 300, 400 uh, megabits per second download, which is, you know, a, right. a really good amount of speed. So if a site is loading slow, you know, one of the first things I do, I'm like, all right, is my, <laughs> is my internet connection good? <laughs> I immediately do a speed test check just to, because I'm like, all right, it must be on my end. It can't be on their end. <laughs> and then when I see that, you know, I'm getting 300 and the site is still slow. I'm like, all right, it's, it's something on their end, obviously. Totally. So, you know, yeah. we, we can't get away with it anymore. You know, you mentioned you came out, um, started getting into the business in 98. And, you know, that was in the age of the dial up service. And yeah, back totally. then, yeah, I mean, we were getting, you know, I mean, just a very small fraction of the speeds. And so when things loaded slowly, yeah, you could get away with it because, yeah, I mean, that's basically the infrastructure at that time. You know, there wasn't overly fast loading sites. People just got accustomed to it. But nowadays, yeah, it's just no excuse. And people are more aware of any any issues like that when it comes to, um, you know, page and, uh, you know, site loading. Um, yeah. So, um you know, with e-commerce businesses, of course, these days, everybody is, is cost conscious. Um, any marketing effort, any money spent on the business, everybody these days is kind of watching it because, you know, it's just kind of in the, in the world we're in, the economy, there's all these talks of the recession, the inflation. So everybody yeah. is kind of a little bit on edge on, on, on spending. So I wanted to see, could you could you share some cost effective and just easy, easy to implement strategies that uh, e-commerce business can use to just optimize their, not only some of the factors that you mentioned earlier, but the conversion rate and then the overall user experience. Totally. Yeah. So a couple things come to mind there, right? Um, one, the biggest websites in the world are out there testing stuff all the time, right? right. And they are creating a paradigm that people want to operate in right? Like there is expected functionality when you go visit Amazon or if you go visit walmart.com or whatever, you know, a really large internet retailer. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that they do common things, right? Like they don't hide their search bar up in the corner underneath a magnifying glass, right? (laughs) Right, Really big. It's right right there in the, you know, the top center of the page. You should follow that example because, you know, so many people already go to those websites that when they come to yours, it's going to feel familiar. So mm-hmm. go steal ideas essentially from people yeah. and, you know, figure out, okay, this has got to be working. You know, Amazon's doing it. Walmart's doing it. Best Buy's doing it. Whoever, right? Why, why would I fight this trend and say you should do it differently when you come visit my website, right? Mm-hmm. That's like if you had a retail store. And you said, um, well, we don't put the clothes out on the floor. Uh, you got to go back into the warehouse and unpackage them yourself and see what you like. <laughs> right. Like right. who does that? Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> you know, why are you trying to break paradigms? So don't right. break paradigms. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's free and, and cheap and easy. Like mm-hmm. you can just go design around that. If you want like an actual, you know, thing that you could put on your site and that you could do. Uh, so Microsoft Clarity great tool, right? Totally free, Mm -hmm. captures tons and tons of 
sessions. It's supposed to be unlimited. It does cap out around, uh, I think, 100,000 a day or something. But for a lot of small businesses, that's more than enough, right? Okay. So what is Microsoft Clarity? Microsoft Clarity is a free to install a uh, little piece of JavaScript on your site that will give you heat mapping. It'll tell you about rage clicks on your site. It's the equivalent to like a hot jar okay. uh, or another quantitative or sorry, not quantitative, qualitative analytics platform, right? And this will tell you points of frustration where people are running into challenges with your website. And the only effort that this takes to put onto your site is putting that tag in your tag manager yeah. or into your site code in some way, shape, or form. So it's not completely free. You're going to spend a few man hours doing it, whoever might be doing that work for you. But it's as close to free as that you're going to really get. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you a ton of insights on how actual users on your site are interacting and finding problems. So yeah. those two things yeah okay great great yeah that's that's awesome i hadn't heard of that tool i know there's a lot of other solutions you mentioned hot jar and other some other solutions a lot of mm -hmm. seo tools will will have that functionality as kind of add-ons but um yeah that's that's great i'm glad you mentioned that i'm gonna check that out and I, I, I definitely encourage everyone to check it out as well as it is a free tool <clears throat> you know um yep. you, you mentioned a couple key things here as far as what the big guys are doing, you know, they're always they're, they're testing, they're testing, testing, testing. And so um, a lot of this kind of goes into when they're doing these things, they're creating, you know, kind of a repository of analytics so that they can make the right decisions of, you know, like you said, simple things like keeping that search bar at the very prominent top and, and visible yeah. of, the, of, of their product pages. So things like that. But um, what does it see in your experience with all that you've done in e-commerce and even with Nimble Consultancy? Um, what do you think are some key performance indicators that, you know, any e-commerce business should monitor to make sure that they measure you know, the success of their marketing efforts? Yeah, you know, so there's all the obvious ones. Like you got to watch what your return on ad spend is. You need to yep. be watching things on site, like, you know, bounce rate and how is that performing? You know, what are your exit pages? What's your overall conversion rate? What's your dropout through your conversion funnel? Uh, and and kind of learn those, those pain points through metrics, mm -hmm. right? And understand, you know, if I could improve the flow through from uh, cart to checkout or through, you know, checkout steps, uh, it would impact my conversion rate by X. I think there's some other things that people really need to be looking at, though, from an e-commerce health perspective, right? And kind of having some some thought processes around operational uh, KPIs, right? Um, what's, what's your percentage of same-day shipments, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do you have same-day shipping on your website? Are all of your packages making it out same day or are you missing, you know, 10 percent, 15 percent, something like that? Yeah. Uh, knowing knowing those kind of operational things are good, as well as say something like, well, when should I hire a new sales rep? How many you know individuals do I need manning chat, email, phone, whatever the, the contact sources are that we have? Um, and how many dollars of revenue do are they able to bring in individually and be responsible for and be measured against? And yeah. when can I really truly afford to bring another one on from a customer mm -hmm. service level, right? Like don't make a reactionary decision and say, we're a little bit busy. And some of these calls, you know, like we're, we're missing 10 calls or two chats or something like that. Right. Yeah, like yeah. know, know what that real threshold is. Right. And then, and then possibly the other one, that people should think about is really kind of what's your re-engagement, what's your rebuy metrics look like, right? Mm -hmm. So I used to understand when I was a direct operator of that marketplace that I was talking about, uh, when have 85% of my users made a second purchase, mm -hmm. right? And I didn't want to wait for a hundred because waiting for a hundred, you know, you're, you're never going to get there, but 85% yeah. is a large enough chunk of your users to give you an indication of, Hey, by 121 days. And that was my number mm -hmm. with that business. 85% of my users who are going to rebuy have made a second purchase. Okay. What am I going to do with that information? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, great. 
if you've reached 121 days and you're a customer of mine and you haven't made a purchase, a, a second purchase, I'm going to be reaching out to you and I'm going to be talking to you via email. I'm going to be giving you an offer. I want you to come back. I might even give you a phone call, right? Mm -hmm. I might, if you're a big enough customer, I might personally reach out to you as the general manager or the vice president or the founder or CEO of the organization and say, Hey, we want your business back. Mm -hmm. Come shop with us. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, shame on me if I actually even wait to 121 days, right? Mm -hmm. Why, why should I? Before mm -hmm. that period in time, I would have an email campaign set up that would push out to those people, right? Mm -hmm. And say, here's an offer for you. Here's 10% off your next purchase. You know, hey, don't forget about this, this offer that we made for you, trying to recapture more of those customers. And so, you know, while that doesn't necessarily work in every business, maybe you have subscriptions or your SaaS software or something like that. For those people that are selling goods that have, you know, they're expendable their commodity goods, these kinds of things, that kind of tactic can work really well to drive more business. And as a metric, they should 100% pay attention to. Yeah, yeah, really is. And I think you're right. They should pay attention to it. And a lot of times uh, businesses don't, um, you know, they really don't kind of look at those specific metrics. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a key one because you can kind of anticipate, you kind of know when most people you know, rebuy, they repurchase. And then if you can kind of get in that window, not even wait that long, but even before that, just any engagement yeah. so that you're top of mind um, is, is is really key. Um, yeah, it's just, it's it's all of those touch points that make a difference. Um, I mean, we we see, I mean, not, any, not only e-commerce businesses doing it, I was, I was thinking of um, a local barbecue restaurant that I go to here in uh, yeah. a suburb of Orlando. And one of the things I noticed that they do is, um, they kind of have somebody, I don't know what their assigned the role is. They probably have other roles, but they, they always have someone walking around. A lot of times restaurants do this. The manager will go out, but they they do this. I mean, this is just a, uh, I guess you could say a fast casual type restaurant. And so right. it's they're starting to adopt it. Normally you would see like a manager walking around in more of a, a higher level restaurant, but now these fast casuals are doing it. They're coming by, they're asking you how it was. They're asking you, okay, do you want something special yeah. or I've even been there when they've offered me, you know, a, a free dessert because they they added something to the menu item. And so it's just all of those little touch points stick in your mind because, you know, you see, I, I'm remembering these things. And so I remember that experience. And so when you when you reach out to people, you can also think of that, that um, kind of uh, don't reach out to them empty handed. You know, maybe you can offer totally. them something, you know, and so you they'll you'll definitely stand out. Uh, you know, opposed to the competitors, because of course, there's many competitors. People have a decision when it comes to purchasing. So for, for yep. sure, yeah. Um, you know, these days we're we're really in this kind of world of uh, social media. Social media is huge. It's really exploded. I mean, now we're getting ready to get to this next level, which is this whole metaverse, which I think is probably really going to explode. Yeah. I think come June, I think Apple has announced they're going to come out with their whole VR goggles and systems. And I think that's going to really propel things. They always tend to lead the way. Uh, so that's going to be part of this whole social media thing. Now, how does an e-commerce company really effectively leverage social media to just improve their their overall performance and just, you know, reach that larger audience. Cause that's really what people want to do when they get out there on these platforms and they're trying to reach a larger audience. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the very first thing I think that companies should do is stop saying things like my customers aren't there. Okay. Uh, right. Like hundred yeah. percent they're, they're there. They might not be the largest population of people there, but there are grandmothers and grandfathers on TikTok. Right. There, you know, there are people on every one of these platforms. There are people on Pinterest. They're on WhatsApp. They're yeah. you, you, yeah. wherever, right? Yeah. They're on a disc. They're on a Discord server somewhere, yeah. right? <laughs> true, true. Right, yeah. and and like literally, like you talk to some people, and they're like, "What's Discord?" And <laughs> you know, right. you're, it's like, "Okay, well, hold on, whole other conversation." But <laughs> yeah. you know, there are there are all these different channels, and you know, your your comments around the metaverse are, are super interesting too, right? And and how do you manage all of them and effectively yeah. leverage them, right? So you're going to need to have some kind of internal management in your organization or an okay. agency that you're partnering with to manage that on on your behalf, 
Yeah. You're going to have to participate across channels. You're going to have to have organized operations around that, right? You, mm-hmm. So you're going to want some kind of scheduling, yeah. um, whether you're putting it into a calendar, an Excel spreadsheet, a tool like, you know, HubSpot has tools if you're in B2B <clears throat> for managing social media, Hootsuite, et cetera. Like you can do these all kinds of things for B2C. And you can also find these tool sets out there now that for small business owners, are are actually super cool where they'll take your posts, right? Like you could spend your Sunday afternoon, your Monday morning at work, your your Tuesday, whatever, if you're an SMB, and compose 30 or 40 different social um, campaigns, right? Or or tweets or posts or whatever you want to call them. And these platforms now have a little bit of AI built into them and you'll be yeah. able to go out and post uh, they'll schedule it for you. They'll try them all out. They'll say, Ooh, this one got the most engagement. I'm going to actually just actively repost that on your behalf. You don't have to go do anything. Right. So there's a bunch of things coming in, in that fashion that'll allow people to extend their impact and their interaction level within social media by using those kinds of tool sets. But I think you also need to explore the cutting edge of things. Right. Mm-hmm. So. You know, live streaming shopping on social platforms is actually becoming a thing, right? So a lot of us would think about like QVC or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're selling stuff on television. Guess what? They're selling stuff on television. It just happens to be television that exists on Facebook or Mm -hmm. Instagram or or wherever it is, right? And people are participating in these live shopping events and making purchases there. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is huge in China right? Mm -hmm. Massive on on Chinese platforms. And the other thing that I would say is figure out how to use influencers uh, if they fit for your business. You know, influencers were huge in the gaming space uh, that I was in, right? And they're huge for VPN products, Mm -hmm. right? You, You get an influencer talking about how, hey, you can circumvent um, Netflix's regional uh, show selections by using a VPN and right. and say, hey, I want to watch TV from the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, totally different selection on Netflix if you're in the UK versus yeah. what you see in, in the US. And maybe you have access to different movies or different shows or whatever that interest you. Mm-hmm. And so understanding influencers and, and how they do that, like, Influencers talking about that can create hundreds of thousands of downloads for games, right? Yeah, so yeah. how can you get an influencer talking about your company's lipstick, your new tennis shoes, uh, the new album that you just dropped, whatever it might be, right? And those kinds of things are really going to allow you to leverage social media in very different ways than mm-hmm. just if you're doing it in-house in in more traditional methodologies. and. I think your money is going to be better spent in those, in those newer areas as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I yeah. totally agree. And yeah, you brought up a good point as well. It, whatever you do, it's got to be managed properly. It's got to be scheduled. You got to have somebody on your team that's dedicated to doing it. Um, I, I deal with a lot of small businesses um, and why, what I do. And I, I kind of, kind of can glean into their processes just from the relationships that we have. And a lot of times I do see it's, a lot of businesses don't have anything formally structured as far as social media is concerned. It's like they'll, you know, they'll do some posting one week. They won't do it the next week. It's nothing formalized. There's nobody really tasked to do it internally. It's got to get shuffled around. And so, or even the, the owner will be doing this himself and or herself. And, you know, that just doesn't, that's not going to work. You, you've got to have something formalized, scheduled, and just organized so that, you, you know, you remain consistent yeah. with it. Yeah, I think that's that's also a very key thing. Um, now, Matt, as we get ready, to, you know, as we get ready to wrap things up, I just wanted to see if you could share some successful case studies uh, where you know e-commerce companies have just made some simple changes to their marketing strategies that resulted in a significant improvement in their you know their overall performance. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, one client in particular of ours comes to mind, and. Uh, they're in uh, flower sales, um, okay. and uh, we had a, a great experiment with them where we were testing, um, you know, against a control uh, variation, and then had three variants 
really where we're just changing essentially the imagery mm -hmm. uh, for the particular product that we were trying to drive more sales for. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we kind of wanted to, you know, in the flower industry, what they're doing when they sell those, um, they're, they're also in, um, you know, death tech, right? And so what they're doing is they're powering websites for funeral homes and selling flowers on those. And right. then they have to route that flower order to a um, flower shop in the city of the funeral home, right? That's because right. that's where the event's taking place and that's mm -hmm. where the flowers need to be delivered and everything. And right. so the other part of that is trying to reduce order refusals, where mm -hmm. if you have kind of a set flower recipe, maybe the floral shop you're working with in that particular city doesn't have all the ingredients to put together what you ordered. And so they'll reject that order. I so see. we were both trying to get down order refusals as well as increase actual sales. Mm -hmm. And in testing just the imagery that's, that was used and landing on one that essentially increased click-through rate uh, from the product landing page into a product detail page, um, we were getting 184% more clicks on to like the category product listing page, and then 23% more clicks uh, into the product detail page. That resulted in a 6% site-wide margin lift. Mm -hmm. It dropped the number of service touches by 60,000. Oh, wow. So they didn't have to like have this opportunity where the florist was like, don't have it, go find somebody else, get involved, right? Like it eradicated that. And it dropped the refusal rate by 23% because okay. we were essentially highlighting this florist choice where mm -hmm. the florist got to go in and for a set dollar amount, make the, the best, most beautiful bouquet that they could, right? I and see. by promoting that, we were able to easily drive those kinds of results. And okay. that happened in two weeks, right? Oh, wow. So that's mm -hmm. like, it's super fast and super yeah. easy. You're replacing images and mm. you're, you're also just kind of at the same time impacting all these other things. Yeah. So amazing yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I mean, it just definitely comes to the, the we kind of come full circle now with that's the great testimonial of just how such a small change can make a huge impact for sure. Just, you know, minor change to some images and then it's like a, you know, snowball effect where it's just increased their sales you know, a lot of times ex exponen yeah. exponentially. So, um, yeah, great, great testimonial. Thank you for sharing that case study for sure. Uh, well, Matt, I've, I've definitely learned a lot. And, you know, as we've said, there's uh, a lot of basic things that don't cost a lot that any e-commerce e e business can can do or cast somebody on their team to go through these things that can definitely make a difference. You don't always have to just look at, you know, these huge uh, grandiose marketing campaigns and think that's the only way to improve your sales and your performance. There's some small things that you just have to kind of look at in house to that can definitely make a difference for sure. Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah. So as we get ready to close things out, I would like to switch gears so our audience can get to know you a little bit better. Um, so if you don't mind sharing one closing fun fact about yourself that you think we'd be interested to know. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, Fun fact, uh, my aunt, uh, Judy, is Judy Shepard Missit, who is the inventor of Jazzercise. Wow. So okay. I, I am, I'm related <laughs> to the inventor of Jazzercise. Wow. <laughs> that, that is a fun fact. Wow. The inventor of Jazzercise. Yeah. So, I mean, when you think yeah. about it, I mean, that that whole Jazzercise it was, I guess, part of the whole, you know, aerobic rage in the 80s, but it was one of the things yeah. that really... I think started all of these gyms doing these classes and, you know, I mean, I, I totally. mean, it, it, to this day, it's now gone on to, um, you know, all of subscription platform services now with, you know, yeah. you Apple, Apple fitness and all of these things. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's an interesting, fun fact. Okay. And um, this, sure. does that brand actually, do you know, does the brand Jazzercise, is it still, live on is are there people oh yeah still? yeah 100 okay. percent. it's it's going strong and active and okay. uh, her daughter my cousin is now yeah. the president and runs oh, wow. it okay uh, they have their own you know online store uh, okay still doing uh still doing videos opening you know locations uh mm -hmm. having teachers and instructors across the globe wow. uh it's a franchisee model as well okay. um so you know 
really, really great business that's still still out there and, and okay. thriving. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's really good to hear that it just continues to live on, even despite you know all of these changes and all of these competitors now in the landscape. Yeah. So good to hear, good to hear. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, lastly, Matt, before we let you go, um, if you don't mind letting our listeners and viewers know the best way for them to get in contact with you, if they'd like to reach out to you and, you know, pick your brain anymore about, uh, you know, any of these simple, but easy to do digital marketing strategies. Yeah. So, uh, I'll, I'll give you three really easy ways to, to reach out to me or nimble gravity. One is our website, okay. which is, uh, nimblegravity.com. Uh, and the other two are both LinkedIn, right? Go follow either Nimble Gravity on LinkedIn or or me, Matt Ranta, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, and happy to connect with folks and uh, talk about any um, challenges that they're facing and how they might overcome them. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. Definitely encourage people to, to check you out on LinkedIn or the other social platforms, as well as check out Nimble gravity.com and we'll be sure to have the link directly in the show notes as well uh, so it's awesome talking to you matt we really appreciate you coming on to the e-commerce marketing podcast thanks arlen great talking to you too thank you thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast if you've enjoyed this episode be sure to rate review subscribe and share it with everyone you know Are you looking to take your digital marketing to the next level but are tired of weeding through countless YouTube videos with unproven and untrusted marketing strategies? Well, we have the answer for you. The More Sales Every Month Online Digital Marketing Course. In this information-packed course, you will learn effective keyword research, link building, content marketing, and much more to attract and convert your site visitors into paying customers. Just go to moresaleseverymonth.com and sign up today for a low one-time fee. In addition to this power-packed course, if you would like to get access to a growing repository of digital marketing articles, PDFs, and eBooks, check out getosi.com resources and opt in to get full access to our library of priceless marketing information to help you take your digital marketing to the next level.